Students are back in class, and that means it's a great time to search out new educational resources. Did you know the district provides a variety of educational materials for students, teachers, and parents? And they are absolutely free. Today, we're diving into all the district's educational resources that are available to you. This is the Water Matters Podcast. You're listening to the Water Matters Podcast, brought to you by the Southwest Florida Water Management District. We answer your most popular questions about the work we do and services we offer, including new projects, springs protection, water conservation efforts, and more. Learn about the many ways we serve the community and protect your water resources. Welcome to this episode of the Water Matters Podcast. I'm your host, Michelle Sager, and today we're talking about the district's educational resources. Back with us today is Katherine Munson, a lead communications coordinator and youth education program manager at the district. Thanks for joining us today, Kat. Thank you for having me. Let's start with the basics. What type of information does the district share and why is this type of educational outreach so important? Yeah, the district has a lot of great resources that are available to help inform and educate the public about the importance of conserving and protecting our water resources. So whether it be through the district's free publications, educational videos, or informational web pages, Our goal is to give people of all ages the tools and background that they would need to make informed decisions that can impact our waterways. Let's zero in on youth education. Can you tell us more about how the district reaches students specifically? Yes, of course. So one of the biggest ways that the district supports youth education is by providing annual funding to the school districts within our region. And that's used to educate students and teachers about freshwater resources. So more specifically, that funding helps to offset the costs of field trips, school grants, teacher trainings, and then other hands-on programming they might want to implement. And then outside of that school district funding, the district also works to provide many other resources to support water education. So for example, the district provides teacher trainings, develops publications, and has a variety of online resources. So if I'm a teacher, what type of resources are available to me? So teachers have access to all of our resources right on our website. So this includes virtual watershed excursions, short education videos, student worksheets, hand-on activity guides, and more. We have a lot available to them. And we also try to pair many of those resources with a teacher's guide, as well as align them with state standards when possible to help make it easier to incorporate into the classroom. Now, I know we have a program called the Splash School Grant Program. Can you explain that a little bit? The Splash School Grant Program is one of my favorite programs because it provides teachers a chance to be creative about water education. And it also provides students with opportunities that they may not be able to do otherwise. So Splash Grants are available to K-12 through public and charter school teachers within the Southwest Florida Water Management District. The grants are awarded at up to $3,000 per school, and activities are set to focus on one or more of our key topics. So that includes water cycle basics, freshwater or estuarian ecosystems, water quality, or water supply and conservation. Um, So the splash grant applications open up each year mid to late July, and then we'll close the first week in September. So the grants are awarded in October, and that makes those funds available throughout the school year. So for teachers who might be listening, can you give some examples of the type of activities that the Splash Grant Program um, funds? I imagine that Field trips are on the top of that list, but there are probably other activities as well. Yes, we do see a lot of field trip programs come in for funding, which are great because a lot of the times the grants help students who may have never been to a local water body experience that for the first time and in an impactful way. But in addition to that, it's really quite amazing to see what teachers plan for their students using their grant funds. We've had teachers create their own model ecosystems in the classroom to conduct studies on water habitats and water quality, or they'll have students design and install a water conserving garden to learn about smart water use outdoors. Um, We've also seen projects that mix art and other areas of study with water education. 
For example, last year, an educator had her students create art pieces that depicted various water-related topics and then had that artwork installed at different municipal and community buildings. And that's really cool to see the student work expand out beyond the school. It's really great that they have these opportunities to do these hands-on lessons through this program. I imagine that that's a great way for students to learn in a different way, correct? Yeah, so getting them to have something hands-on and something they wouldn't normally do in the classroom. We hear from a lot of educators at the end of the year that students are still talking about what they're doing at home, what they're encouraging their friends and family to do. So it's obviously a way that they can take what they're learning and put it into the real world because of that hands-on experience. Really interesting. Now, what if I'm a parent? Maybe I homeschool, maybe I lead a youth organization, or I'm just looking for additional materials to supplement my child's education. What type of materials are available to me? So outside of the splash grants, all of those educational resources that I mentioned earlier would also be available to you. So if you're looking for student workbooks or coloring pages, water quality test kits, those are all free to both formal and informal educators. The one caveat is that we're only able to ship out materials to those within our water management district boundary. But you'll find that many of our resources are either online or available as a PDF. So you can always just print that out and make copies of your own, even if you're outside of our district. And for those who may be wondering if they're in our district or not, you can go to our website. We do have a map that shows the 16 counties that are considered part of our district. Now, I know we also have web pages specifically designed for students. Talk to us about the H2O zone and what a student might find there. So the H2O zone is a place where students can go to learn more about different water resource topics, whether they're studying the water cycle, the aquifer, water quality, anything really related to water. It's just this hub of information that's all in one place where students can easily skip around and navigate from one topic to the next. It also includes a glossary that helps define commonly used terms when discussing water resources, which I think would be especially helpful if a student is new to the subject or just getting into learning about our waterways. We also have a lot of highly trained professionals here at the district from all types of backgrounds, including scientists and engineers. What if I would like someone from the district to come to my school and speak on a water topic? So if you're interested in having a guest speaker from the district visit your classroom or to join you for, say, an upcoming event, you can email watereducation at watermatters.org. And although we don't have a dedicated group of staff that are tasked with conducting guest presentations or working those tabling events, we are always happy to put the request out to see who may be available to join you. And district staff love the chance to interact with students. So it's really always a fun time when we're able to get out and get involved. Yeah, I know that our staff love to go out there and really interact with the students because those are the people who are going to be working here in the future. Yes, exactly. They love to be able to inspire and then also have the students inspire them when they hear about what they're learning uh, and the passions that they have. We talked a lot about education as it pertains to students in schools but we offer a lot of materials that are even great for adults. Can you talk about some of the publications we offer and how someone might get them? I'm glad you brought that up. So yes, in addition to our student-focused publications, we have a wide array of free publications for the general public as well. So those will include informational brochures on things like water conservation, Florida-friendly landscaping, stormwater systems, and then a plethora of other topics. And you can access those at watermatters.org slash publications and have them actually shipped right to your house free of charge. Um, But again, shipping is only available to those within our water management district. However, anyone can access the PDF version of the publications on our site. 
Is there anything else you think we need to know about the education resources we offer? I think I would really just encourage educators, students, or really anyone else who might be interested in learning more to go to our website and explore what's out there. We've got a lot of great information on there. Again, we've got info for all ages. So just go. It's free of charge and see if you might find something that could be useful. Well said. This has been a lot of great information and thank you for sharing this with our audience. Everything we discussed today can be found at watermatters.org education. So go there and explore all we have to offer. Thanks for listening to the Water Matters podcast. Mm-hmm.